really easy. Anybody could do it at home, I think. There, on the stove. Roger's confidence is premature. Head chef Pasquale still hasn't seen his dish plated up. Oh, look at me when I do things. The onions on top of the salad, not underneath. Do again, now. It's 12.30 and lunch service is underway. Marcia, bresao la parmigiana, followed by risotto ravioli mena. Natasha is responsible for a main course of red mullet with tagliolini. A bit stressful, but it's also exciting. I'm nervous to see what he says about my first dish. But already there's a problem. She's cut the fish the wrong size. Too small, too small. Take him off of the pants. Too small. Put the pan back on there. Too small. There. Herman is cooking a mane of sea bass on a bed of green peppers and seems unfazed by the challenge. It's not too difficult. I'm, I haven't broken out in a sweat yet, but we'll see later. Roger is making a starter of char-grilled tuna on bolotti beans with onion salad and feels he's got the skills to tackle the job. Really easy. Anybody could do it at home, I think. There, on the stove. Roger's confidence is premature. Head chef Pasquale still hasn't seen his dish plated up. Oh, look at me when I do things. The onions on top of the salad, not underneath. Do again, now. Come on, move her. The is in the lift, now. With orders stacking up, the sous chef has to step in. Marcia, due carpaccio octopus, followed by due ravioli mena. The restaurant is now full, and Herman is starting to feel the pressure. His sea bass has broken in two. Head chef Pasquale is not happy. Why is broken? Why? Because I flipped it When we go to save the customers, Herman is the fish. So this table is not going to pay today. There was an accident about the fishes. Quite disappointed myself. Roger, we go with the tuna. Come on, now. At Roger's station, things have gone from bad to worse. Finished dishes are going cold because his starter is nowhere near ready. 20 minutes for a starter. The pass is going to be cold before when he goes upstairs. I'm going as fast as I can, chef. Come on, move her. The pass is in the lift now. Meanwhile, Natasha has overcome her early nerves and is turning out perfect food. I do feel a bit more confident now. I've done a couple of them and I managed to plate them up and they didn't look too bad after a little bit of practice. So, because I haven't been yelled at too much, I'm feeling OK. <laughs> it's 2.30 and the final dishes leave the kitchen. It's time for head chef Pasquale to meet John and Greg and give his expert opinion. Thank you very much. No Taking three of our novices into your kitchen on a busy ship. How did they do? Generally, they didn't go. It was not. It was not bad. Not bad. Generally, Natasha. She was uh, lost on doing. First, she she didn't prep the fish properly. The red mullet. But I think as as the day went, Natasha was uh, better during the service. What happened to Roger during Roger, the service? during the service, he lost it completely. I think uh, when he was a bit under pressure, he got a bit mixed up on his head, all the checks to do. Herman, when he put a fillet of fish in the pan, when it was cooked, the meat fell off from the skin. If you had to employ one of them, who would it be? I think Natasha is, is uh, of them three, it would be the best one to cope during the service. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. Yesterday, Herman impressed with his Thai soup, but he went to pieces under pressure. Can he now use his skills with pastry to wow the judges? Natasha's dish divided John and Greg, but she shone in the restaurant. Can she bring the judges back on side? Session musician Roger has produced some flavoursome food, but he struggled to keep up with the pace in the pro kitchen. Can he come back in the last round? One hour, two magnificent courses, and at the end of this, we will have a quarter finalist. Off you go. They have to cook a two course meal of their own design. Only one of them will win a place in Friday's quarter final. Herman has chosen a menu that shows off both his Singaporean background and his love of pastry. Herman? Yes? What are you doing for us? Uh, I'm doing beef render with lacy pancakes and uh, passion fruit tart. You're making what's called rendang, which is a dish which is traditionally cooked in coconut milk. You reduce the coconut milk down with your, your paste and your beef for about three hours. Yeah. How are you going to do that? In 50 minutes? Um, I don't know. I'm just the first time I'm doing it. I usually do it in about three or four hours. He's just by his own admission 
said that he's doing this in an hour, but never tried it before. He's doing it in small quantities and hopes it's going to work. The spices that were going into his paste for that sauce look fantastic. You've had 20 minutes, you've got 40 minutes left. Natasha hopes her two dishes will highlight her culinary skills. Natasha? Hi. What are you cooking for us? I am cooking um, duck with a red grapefruit and ginger sauce, uh, with coconut and coriander rice, and then a banana and blueberry crumble. Natasha, why are these <coughs> two dishes going to be good enough to put you through? Um, and it's a mixture of showing that I can do something gourmet that looks good on a plate and a nice homely pudding that tastes great. So is your food better than these two? I believe so. That's classic. She's got the duck there and she's got the honey and the soy. The duck and the grapefruit I get, but grapefruit and rice? I don't know. Roger aims to impress John and Greg with some unusual flavour combinations. Roger. Good afternoon. What are you cooking for us? Uh, I'm doing some Thai satay kebabs with a peanut sauce and a mango and tomato salsa. Pan-fried sea bass on top, of, on top of smoky bacon and cabbage. Wow. Roger and subtle is probably not words you're often hearing the same sentence, is it? What are you trying to show us? Um, that I can cook. I've never seen so many issues piling up as now piling up on Roger's bench. We've got a piece of fish there with bacon and a creamy fishy sauce, then with saffron potato. I mean, which is which here? Where are we going? If he pulls it off, that, um, you might know, but if he pulls it off, he's got to be a, a great, great cook. Should we go on the plates now, guys? You've got about two minutes left. That's it. Time's up. Herman's first course is a beef rendang pancake. For dessert, he's made passion fruit and raspberry tart. The flavour of the beef is delicious. It's coconut, it's spiced, very hot. But for me, rendang should be chewy and sort of soft meat and really so cooked. And I don't think it really transfers very well as a... Quick dish. No. It tastes good. And it's succulent meat and it's <coughs> heavily spiced and it's coconut milk and there's a big whack of chilli. Yeah. But it doesn't look like a lot of work's gone into it. It looks completely unappealing. There's a lot of effort got into it, actually. Let's just move on from your main course to your dessert, yep. can we? Good buttery pastry, lovely fresh raspberries, good, strong, passion fruit cream in the centre. Lovely, crumbly, sweet pastry. Beautiful hint of passion fruit in there, which is quite sharp. Uh, look, it seems to me that you got through your main as fast as you could because you wanted to concentrate your efforts on patisserie. Natasha has gone for duck, together with coconut and coriander rice with grapefruit. For dessert, she's made banana and blueberry crumble with clotted cream. You've overcooked this. Ginger and honey soy mix is absolutely lovely. And I think you got that mixture absolutely right. But chewing down through rice into grapefruit is very unusual, to say the least. The duck is really tasty. The sauce is lovely and bitter and actually balanced out really nicely, and I like that, actually. It's the rice, which is the combination, which is weird. The reason there is not, you know, a, a culinary dish with grapefruit and rice on it is because it's sort of a thing that just doesn't work together. That's not the prettiest crumble I've ever seen. Me neither. Um, I'm not tasting a lot of fruit. Cooked banana, maple syrup, pecan nuts. I get all the flavours. It's very sweet. Roger has made Thai chicken with satay sauce on a bed of mango salsa. To follow, he's made pan-fried sea bass on savoy cabbage with smoky bacon and saffron potatoes. Peanuts. Coriander, chilli, sauce is okay. The chicken to me is slightly overcooked. My major problem is the, the salsa idea. 
I don't believe that mangoes and tomatoes and onions belong together as a salad. Okay. A little bit of coriander, peanut, into chilli. I think that's a good sauce. Let's talk about the main course. Okay. The main flavour is the fish sauce and the sea bass. Yeah. We have cabbage, bacon, saffron, potatoes and a sauce. My biggest problem is the amount of ingredients on the plate. I think it tastes quite good, Roger. Thanks. I'm surprised to say. Um, the sauce is quite subtly fishy. I can even still taste amazingly in all that. I can still taste a little bit of saffron in your, in your potato. I think it looks like a complete shambles, but it actually tastes okay.